This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build an online presence and run your business. Your brush and wet palette are staples in your arsenal. Let's talk about the most common ways to ruin your expensive equipment, how to save your gear, and what to do in the future. Let's start with one of the foundational elements of miniature painting. And one of the most common problems, brush splitting. Brush splitting is caused by getting paint into the ferrule. The ferrule houses the heel of the brush, which is what gives your brush its shape. The most common way for this to happen is by dipping your brush so far into your paint that paint gets into the ferrule. That's why we only want to load our brush halfway when painting. Another way this can happen is by storing your brush point up. Storing your brush point up causes water, paint, and other debris to settle down in the ferrule. It is recommended to store your brush tip down. That's the main reason I got the paint puck water cup, which I talk about more in this video here. You can also equip your desk with a pool noodle to store your brushes. You can learn how by checking out the free post on my Patreon, link in my description box. If your brush no longer holds its shape, you aren't cleaning it frequently enough. With frequent use, paint begins to build up and dry on the individual hairs of your brush, creating a barrier in between each individual hair and thus preventing it from returning to that perfect shape. The best way to fix and avoid this problem is frequent brush cleaning, which I will admit is something that I don't do particularly well. Clean your brush at least weekly, but after every session would be better. I use the Sonia brush cleaner, and it has definitely improved my brushes. In between sessions, clean your brush as thoroughly as you can in the water cup. Again, I use the paint puck because it comes with silicone nubs at the bottom of the glass for this very reason. And also, be sure to clean your cup out as well. Cleaning your brush in dirty water is a sure way to keep your brush dirty. I know that there are products specifically designed to clean and restore brushes when they have paint dried in them. Unfortunately, the one I tried ruined my brush even further. So if you have a recommendation for a good brush restorer, let me know down in the comments below. Okay, but what about curving brushes? If you're using a synthetic brush, your brush will always eventually begin to curve. It's just the nature of the material. But there are some things we can do to slow it down. Along with everything listed above, don't push paint with your synthetic brush. Instead, only pull the brush towards you. Alternate which side of the brush you paint with. Not on every brush stroke, but overall. If your brush is ruined for detail work, that does not mean that it's unusable. For example, I have a mixing brush that I use for getting paint out of pots as well as mixing on my wet palette. Or maybe if it's not holding its point, it can still be used as a base layer brush and edge highlighting. A curved synthetic brush can actually be useful as the curve can help you paint difficult to reach places. Lastly, you can also trim your brush short and make an undo brush, which I talk about in this video here. Let's take a minute to talk about Squarespace. I find it so exciting that people want to wear my merch, and through the Squarespace print-on-demand feature, I can create a cool website and sell my merch with ease. Linking to one of their outside vendors was simple, and my storefront looks great. I also love how easy it is to connect to my social media so people can keep up with whatever I'm doing. If you want to make your own website, start selling your own products, or whatever else you can think of, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash lilamev and use code lilamev for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, back to painting. Next, a bad smelling wet palette and black dots on your sponge is not a good sign. And really, it comes down to one word, mold. Mold can affect your paint, and if you're a brush licker, you really don't want to get mold in your mouth. Mold loves warm and wet environments, which, depending on your painting environment, might be exactly what a wet palette provides. The best way to solve mold? Prevention. At the first sign of smell, throw out your paper, wash your sponge with antimicrobial soap and hot water, and rinse the case with alcohol, then water. After that, there are several methods you can try. Place an old copper penny under your sponge or a piece of copper wire. Whenever you're going a few days without painting, clean your palette and let it dry. Sitting in water is what causes mold, so shortening the time the sponge is wet will give mold a weaker chance of starting in the first place. If you're worried about wasting paper, check out Redgrass Games' reusable paper that can be washed off and used over and over.
Next, you can rotate sponges. If you paint all the time but still worry about your sponge, you can rotate your sponges every week to again limit the time it sits in water. If for whatever reason none of the above works for you, you can also put your wet palette in the fridge as that is an environmentally controlled box which should help keep your wet palette mold free. Okay, but what if your wet palette already has mold on it? Does that mean it's trashed? And the answer is maybe. If it's just a little bit, keep an eye on it. At the first sign of progression, pitch it. It's not worth the risk. I have heard of cleaning your wet palette sponge using boiling water and vinegar, so I gave it a try. I let my sponge sit in a mixture of boiling water and vinegar for three minutes. Unfortunately, it ruined my sponge. My paint now dries extremely quickly and also has this sort of weird gummy texture. All right, that's it from me. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, go join me over on Patreon. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.